Okay, so thanks for coming this morning. I'm Christophe Sautier. This is Stéphane Albert. We are both working for a company called Objective Lib, and we are about to talk uh, to you about CloudKitty, which is a, a rating component we are developing in the company. Since we are just a small company, and a French company, so by the way, you might notice that in my English. Uh, I will just give you a few facts about our company. We are an open source company. We just work on open source technologies with a strong um, emphasis on infrastructure. Actually, we have a, a, a strong emphasis on innovative technology, like, for instance, OpenStack, but also technologies that we can use around OpenStack. So we'll talk a lot about automation, like Puppet, Ansible, or virtualization, like KVM, or Docker, or all this kind of stuff. We have a strong commitment in the company. The first one is to satisfy our clients. We are really happy to say that we have more than 98% of our customer who have followed trainings with us who are satisfied by that. It's quite important because we gave something more than 3,000, we had more than 3,000 trainee, so 98% of satisfaction is quite high. We tried to be a major open source contributor with our, with our way, because we're just a small company like you'll see later, but uh, usually we are in the top 20 contributors, so, which is quite good for us. Um, we're also making some nice shirts, as you can see, but this is not our, strong, our main interest. We also have to do some billable stuff for our clients. So we do consulting, expertise, deployment, support. We developed uh, a wide range of uh, activities around the pen stack, like starter pack, which is a mix of trainings and proof of concept, and we have a quite complete uh, training catalog. Um, just to give you some numbers, since, since rating is quite related, related to figures, the, the company has been started in 2009. We have a, a growth of about 30% for this year, and in this revenue, about 11% are dedicated to research and, and development. We are about 10. In the, we are 10 in the company. Uh, we have two offices, one in Paris and one in Toulouse, which is where the, the headquarters are located. And more important here, it's our fifth open stack summit. So we're involved in the company for quite a long. We're involved in the community for quite a long time. Uh, what we'll tackle here is our open stack involvement. We spread OpenStack whenever we want. Uh, like I said earlier, we do a lot of trainings, we do support, we help people to increase their level and their knowledge of OpenStack. I am quite involved in the French community since I'm the secretary of the, of the French community. We do a lot of proof of concept, we contribute anytime we can. And we also de de deploy clouds for some of our customers or partners. And one thing that occurred a lot during this deployment was how can I build my customers? How can I charge for the service I'm providing? So the first answer we gave was, oh, that's annoying, because you can't find anything on the open source in the open source world, or at least something which is, which is maintained or still active. And at some point we said, okay, it's been the third or fourth time we've been asked for that, so let's do something about that. So we said, okay, right now you have nothing for sure. But in a few months, you have something, and we'll, we'll develop that thing, and that thing is CloudKitty. So, CloudKitty is an additional rating component for OpenStack. It's developed with the full respect of all OpenStack best practices. We will give you an overview of that in a few minutes. Uh, it's fully integrated with OpenStack. We, have, we are able to retrieve information from Silometer using the API or whatever we need. We can get information from Ceph, and Stefan will explain that later. We are fully integrated on Horizon, like you might be able to see inside the demonstration we give you, and it's highly modular, really highly modular. Uh, CloudKitty, as you can see here, fetches, okay. I understand why it's not working. If I turn it on, it won't work. Um, CloudKitty right here fetches information from an API because that's the way to do things, and then you process data. And using, and depending your usage you want to do, depending your role, it will give you 
different options and different things to do. For instance, if you're an IT manager, you will be able to give your users a tool to predict the, and track their cost usage of your cloud, which, I mean, is quite important for them. If you're a cloud provider, well, you just need to charge your customer. Not just that, but this is quite important for the safety of your company. So you'll be able to define the full pricing policy you want to apply for your customer. You'll be able to address all your clients because it's multi-tenant. You'll be able also to analyze the usage of your customers because you'll have an administration panel that will give you this information. And something that we have developed lately in CloudKitty is that even if you're not providing a cloud yourself, even if you're just an editor of an application, you can use CloudKitty. Because CloudKitty can be a bit separated from OpenStack and just uh, allow you to charge and to create the rating engine of your application or you know, using something which is not cloud-ready yet. Stephen. Okay. okay, so let's dive into CloudKitty architecture. So as uh, Christophe emphasized uh, previously, uh, we are highly modular. So every piece uh, I will show in the next slide are still door modules. So it's a way to load a piece of code into an existing application. Uh, first PC piece is the tenant feature. So basically, it's a way to load UIDs. So it's tenant IDs in the case of OpenStack. So you can have um, different tenant features. For example, if you want to apply rectangle or SaaS application and not OpenStack, uh, you just need to have uh, your own driver uh, and, for example, database. And then you load uh, IDs of your clients, and you can apply that to SaaS application, for example. So it's a, a way to um, make CloudKitty work even outside of OpenStack uh, application. Um, in our demo, at the end, uh, we'll use uh, the Keystone tenant feature, uh, which basically fetch all the tenants that CloudKitty can access and check for the rating role. As soon as you add uh, CloudKitty in the tenant with the rating role, it will get fetched, and all the data in the tenant will get uh, processed for rating. So just a quick look at the configuration file. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, you've got a tenant feature section. So you can uh, specify your backend, which will be loaded dynamically in the code later. Uh, another section, Keystone feature, feature uh, where you set your uh, Keystone credentials uh, as admin so CloudKitty can fetch all the tenants and see what's going on. <coughs> Second point in the, is the collector. So basically, uh, it fetch all the metrics data from backends. You have two possibilities. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, the double blue arrows are um, static configuration in the configuration file, and the quadish uh, orange arrow are uh, for dynamic, all dynamic uh, configuration. So two possibilities. Even you set a module uh, in your configuration file, for example, Silometer, if you only want to do Silometer, or a more advanced way is to use Meta Collector, which uh, exposes an, AP an API to your uh, administrators, so you can um, use multiple collectors, uh, set priority on the metrics you want to collect. For example, if you got a serial meter and a vendor plugin for network application, and you want to have all your compute data from serial meter, you can set compute for serial meter and networking information from your vendor plugin to have additional information for rating, for example. If you want to have, um, if your vendor plugin can show you east-west and south-north uh, bandwidth, then you can do rating on this kind of metrics. <clears throat> Again, a quick look at the configuration. So you've got a collect uh, section, which is uh, the generic uh, configuration. So you set your collector. Is it here it's kilometer? Uh, the period is the rating period. So basically, one hour. It means that every hour, we will check for uh, new data on your metric backend and push it back in the rating pipeline. Uh, wait period is the amount of um, periods we lag in the past to be sure that all the data is present in your metric backend. And the services is simply a list of all the services you want to collect and apply rating on. Uh, you can have a large amount of uh, metrics uh, you will collect. You're not uh, um, enforced to use them later in your rating uh, process. 
And then again, the serometer collector uh, section, which is basically uh, keystone credentials to access serometer. As we are um, using separ separate uh, parts for every uh, authentication, tenant fetching, you will have to uh, put your credential multiple times. <coughs> Okay, so the third part is uh, pretty simple. It's shared, shared code between the collectors. Uh, it's transformers. Uh, their goal is to um, take your metrics data and put them in a lang uh, format that is understandable, understandable for Cloud Kitty. So it's just shared code and you can enforce uh, the dependencies directly in the collector modules. Okay, so now the interesting part. Uh, it's a rating uh, part, it's a fourth, fourth part. Um, so rating, uh, it's pretty simple. You've got uh, a lot of modules that you can load dynamically in your application, and you can choose to enable or disable them on the fly with an API. Uh, you can choose to, uh, every rating module can expose its own custom API, so you can configure them directly from an API uh, there is a way to load uh, code in your client and in your dashboard. So basically, you expose a custom API. Your clients don't need to know how the API is working. You've got uh, Steve Door namespaces. So the client will automatically, automatically get new shell commands. So you have directly and direct integration in your CLI application or Horizon uh, dashboard. And they are uh, executed uh, sequentially, so you can set priority for every rating module on the API on the fly. So uh, you can execute them in a, in a defined uh, deterministic way. Uh, the storage part, so it's pretty simple actually. Uh, it's just uh, a stable module to an, an extension. Uh, it's responsible of uh, writing all the data to a backend. In our example, is SQL Alchemy, so a SQL database. And it's uh, here to ensure consistency. So you know that uh, the data you put in your backend will get consistent. You don't have uh, multiple writes of the same thing, uh, etc. Uh, we have a common API on top of every storage backend. So you can query your storage backend from the API to filter on some resource types. Uh, period and other metadata so you can generate a report really easily. <clears throat> and the last part, oh, oh, configuration, sorry. Uh, so it's two lines actually. Uh, so you can set your storage backend uh, easily. Uh, here it's uh, SQL Alchemy. Last part, orchestrator. So it's huge glue code of all the previous pieces you, you've seen. Um, it's a component that loads all the previous parts and do the dependency checking. Um, its goal is to maintain the worker pool. So um, in Cloud Kitty, we have a, a huge pool of workers, so you can uh, thread it and have uh, good performances. There is uh, API workers and processors worker. Uh, basically, you've got an API node like you, you can set on, on the front of your um, infrastructure, and every message goes through a message queue. So when, you, when some of your clients uh, want to have a price, for example, they want to start a new instance, and they want to know the price before the instance is started, you can have an, ap an API call, which will go in the message queue, is processed by the processor, so you can have huge computers to do the processing, and then it goes back to the API. And there is the processor workers, which clearly uh, do all the collection, and the rating, and the storage. So back to Christoph. Thanks. Um, all this information that are gathered by Cloud Kitty need to be used after that. So that's where the report generator takes place. It will take the data that we have processed and put them into a, a consolidated file. Actually, since Cloud Kitty is quite modular, you can produce the file the way you want. And even you can produce many files in the same time. So if you have different tools, since this is the goal of this kind of file, if you have different tools that need to take this information, you can give them at the same time. Um, if I have a closer look at the HMAP module, which is a rating module Stefan just, not, just mentioned, <coughs> we had to introduce uh, a way to organize things. So 
the first thing we defined was a group. A group is a set of rules that we want to be applied at the same time. Then we have the notion of service. A service matches a Cloud Kitty service, which is basically the family of things you want to process, to process. You want to process compute, you want to process network, you want to process storage, that's it. Um, using the inside the service, you have many fields you want to address. It can be the image, the flavor, things like that. The image ID, actually. The flavor, things like that. And once you have this file ID, you want to define some price for that. So it will be using a mapping or a threshold. The mapping is just, you said, for this image, like you'll see later, you, you because that amount of money, it will this cost. But for a threshold, it would be with different level. By instance, for storage, you want to charge the customer this price for the first step of uh, storage. But when, once they are gone further this uh, level of storage, you want to charge them another amount of money. So that's what threshold is for. And so when you gather all these <coughs> abstraction, group, service, fill, mapping, and threshold, you are able using HMAP to define your own policy. So let's give you a demo of that. Uh, we're about to do a rating policy, which is, I would say, quite complex because it will involve a few stuff. And let's have a look on the impact on the user. What will be the output for the user? Okay, so uh, we'll start with um, um, all, I, all I said about the API, the rating module, how to enable them, disable them. So we'll show you uh, how it's working. So you've got uh, new panels actually in Horizon. You've got a rating panel. You've got two panels, one for users and one for administrators. So uh, here you, we are in the admin, admin section. And you can access all your rating modules. Um, there is uh, two fields. Oh. Um, we are going to enable HMAP, actually. So you just click on enable module, and we, it will send an, uh, a message to all your processors to tell them to enable the module. So basically, um, it enables you to ensure consistency on all your calculations. The message is uh, sent to all the workers. They finish their processing. And when they're done, they load the new configuration. So you don't have an inconsistency in your calculation. No further, uh, we'll show you how we do rating policies. So we will work on the HMAP module. Uh, we'll start with the compute. So we want to chart people on compute usage. So you set a service as compute, OK? And it's basically a, a huge tree of rules. Uh, you create a group. So <clears throat> here, we want to charge on instance uptime. OK? It's just a tag. There is no meaning to the name of the group, OK? It's just to uh, group different rules. We create a new field. So a field um, in Cloud Kitty is a mapping between a resource and its metadata. So here, we want to uh, charge the people based on the flavor they use, OK? So we'll start with uh, M1 Nano, which is a small one. It's a dev stack one, actually. And uh, there is two type. Uh, yeah, we forgot to talk about that. Two type, flat and rate. Uh, flat is the base price you want to apply. So basically, uh, you can have multiple uh, uh, flat price for uh, different fields, and the best, the highest flat price will apply. Um, and rate is uh, made to apply discount or, or modify the price, basically. So we apply uh, two field mappings. Uh, one for M1 Nano, one for M1 Micro, uh, with different prices on, an, uh, on a per hour basi basis. And we want to show you what's, uh, what the rate type is doing. So we will simulate. Uh, basically, we want to say that uh, Windows images uh, consume more uh, resources than Linux images. So we want to add a 10% uh, increase in the price. So here we uh, reference the image ID, so the UID of the image in Glance in the field to map, and we set 1.1 uh, to apply 10% more to the price. 
So next, uh, we want to rate another series, which will be volume. So again, we create a new group because we want to um, um, separate the calculation from the instant subtime because uh, instant subtime is a, is a set of rule and we don't want to apply, for example, threshold rates to, to our instant subtime calculations. So again, uh, we've got a flat price, which is a price per gigabyte for volume, okay? And we set the group. And then, so service threshold, uh, there is two types of, of threshold, actually. There is a, a service threshold and field threshold. Service thresholds apply on the quantity of your service. So if you're um, familiar with um, silometer, it's a quantity in silometer. And a field threshold apply on the metadata, so you can uh, apply levels on a metadata value of your resource. So here we want to say different price, for example, when you going past 10 gigabytes, you will have a discount. And when, when you go past 20 gigabytes, you will have a discount too. So 5% uh, for 10 gigabytes and 8%, I think, for um, 12, uh, 20 gigabytes. So next thing is the floating IP. We want to charge our customer for every floating IP they will con uh, consume. So again, we create a service mapping, not a field mapping, because we want to apply our rating rule on the number of floating IPs they're using, and we don't need to know metadata of the floating IP. We create a new group because we forgot two. So yeah, you, you can modify all your, your rating rules on the fly and the um, new configuration, uh, the reload uh, configuration messages are sent to all the processors so they can reload the configuration as soon as they are finished with the current processing. So now we will show you the predictive pricing, which is a feature uh, you can show to your users. Actually, we only do this on instance creation, but we plan to add it on uh, it's stack creation, so uh, people can send uh, it templates on your cloud and know how much all the resources in your template will cost them. Uh, as you can see, there is a uh, below the total RAM uh, number, you can see the price. So it will be changing as soon as um, the user is choosing a new flavor or new image. <coughs> So for example, uh, there is a rate on the flavor, so you can see that 10% increase is applied if you choose the Windows image. So that's for a predictive pricing. And now we will show you what's, uh, what's going on with the rating and the reporting in Cloud Kitty. So we have a small panel which shows you the total for the current month, so you can know uh, all, how much you have consumed. And then there is a, whoa, it's looping. Sorry. Maybe a little bit quick. Okay. Okay, and here's the re a reporting view. So basically, you can show to your uh, clients what they are consuming. So they can know um, if it's uh, based on bandwidth usage, on compute usage, etc. cetera. Uh, we plan to add more views for reporting, so they can have a um, history of what they consumed uh, previous months. So they can know if uh, it's because their bandwidth usage is increasing, that their bill is going up, etc. Okay, and Christoph will show you next. next. Um, <clears throat> since Cloud Kitty is fully open source, uh, we have a roadmap that we are really happy to show you and to share with you. Um, currently, uh, we're about to start looking for a partnership with uh, some major actors so that 
they can promote and we can have an integration with them. Um, we really hope to be able to enter the big tent in the last cycle. So far, Cloud Kitty is on the stack forge already, but entering the big tent is uh, clearly a goal for us. And from a uh, for technical uh, roadmap, we want to, add, uh, as I just said, we want to add new uh, reporting in the dashboard. Uh, we want to add translation, but I'm sure you can hear us, uh, we are French. So French people want to have French UI, so we need to add translation. Um, we, are, we want to add new rating parameters. So um, at the moment, when you modify your configuration for the rating, it's applied as soon as you apply your new configuration, so it might uh, be some problems if you want to apply new rating uh, for the next month, for example. So we want to add a validity period like you can have in X509 uh, uh, certificates. Say, this rating rule is applied from this period up to this period, and you can have some nice, nice transitions between uh, your rating policies. Uh, we want to add, uh, improve our worker pool to have an asynchronous worker pool because at the moment it's all sequential, so it's, it, it's not the best way to scale. Uh, we want to have an asynchronous API because um, huge, huge consumers, we have a huge volume of data and reporting data, so you can have timeouts on your API, so you want to query it multiple times, and we need to have asynchronous API to do this. And then we want to have a, configurating, a configurable uh, rating period, so for example, your bandwidth, you don't want to charge uh, your users on an hour uh, perspective because there is burst and it's not really representative of their consumption. So you want to charge them by month basis, for example. So we want to add uh, this possibility so you can have an instance of time for one hour and then a, a bandwidth consumption for a month. <coughs> and that's it for the technical um, points. Since you all see we're right here at the UDS Vancouver, we uh, are planning to do some communication stuff like a, a dedicated website. Actually, it is something that we've already started to work on and it should be on, I said, maybe in the next few weeks, we hope so at least. Uh, we're about to attend the Cloud Week in Paris, which is an, an event that will, that will take place in first week of July, I think. Uh, we hope to be there at the next uh, ODS in Tokyo for sure. Um, Cloud Kitty is actually running in production in some of our customers already. Uh, we can mention the Itera, which is a customer of us, uh, which is a small French company that runs a public cloud. Uh, but we have a few others who are using Cloud Kitty in production or advanced testing at least. Uh, we hope that maybe you too <laughs> we'll use it or test it, so please feel, feel free to ask us for any questions you have. Um, actually, if you want to test it, you won't start it to test it in production. You will just test it maybe on DevStack. So uh, the integration and to test uh, Cloud Kitty on DevStack is quite simple. Just take these two lines here on your local conf, and that's it. You start your, you start your uh, DevStack, and you will have Cloud Kitty. So it's quite simple, actually. Um, and please come to visit us on our booth, because uh, we are here. It's a booth uh, T55. Uh, we are able to help you to answer all your questions, because there are for sure many things you haven't been able to explain right here. Uh, you might not, uh, not have seen very clearly the demonstrations. So we have the link. Uh, of, of, we have the videos with us, so we can explain them to you directly. We can talk with you. We'll be really happy to give you the last shots we have to. Uh, not a lot, unfortunately. Um, we will give, uh, of course, we will publish the, the slides online, putting the, the links to the videos too. It will be easier on it. And um, I think that's it. You have our contacts here, uh, our uh, Twitter and things like that. And, that's it. Thank you. Um, if you have any questions, I think it's time. Yes.
Okay, so the, the question was, um, we have apparently tackled quite deeply the rating part, but for a public cloud provider, uh, there are some other needs, like billing and processing payments, like that. Um, I can answer, but you can answer too. Uh, but basically, we don't plan to do that. We are clearly for rating. Um, the idea for us is to say that all the billing stuff to produce the bill, really, to produce the file that your user will need, and uh, the payment processing, like you said, all this kind of stuff is already, for all the big cloud, is already in place. Or all companies have their different needs, their different tools, their different process. Many companies have that, clearly. So they don't want to have another tool to do that. So we are more focused on giving them the file they will put inside their tool, inside their ERP, using the right format and so that they can interact with it instead of bring them a new tool that will replace their existing tool with their old distro or anything like that. So we'll just tackle the rating. Just to add uh, a quick thing, uh, actually we want to bridge the gap between your metrics and your billing system. We don't want to do a billing system because tax system is different in every country, accounting is different in every country, that's huge. That's huge, that's hard to, hard to maintain, and there is a lot of project to do that. So basically, what you can do is even write a storage backend that will put it back in your billing system directly without even generating reports, or you can even, even uh, create a new rating module and use your billing system. So you take data from Cloudity, use your rating module, push it back in your billing system, pull it back if you need to, get it back, store it, even in your SQL, SQL backend, or push it back again in some new uh, building database. That's what we do with uh, the, the client was mentioning earlier. They already have uh, an ERP, they are already have their billing system, their processing of payment, they already have all these kind of things, and they don't want us to uh, change that because they already have an infrastructure for that. They already have cl clients or all this kind of stuff because they're not just doing a public cloud, they're doing other stuff. So they ask us to be able to integrate, integrate with it. Any questions? Yes? Can, uh, yeah, can you go to the microphone, sorry. please? Isn't there? Thanks threshold billing, so you reach a certain threshold and you can up the rate, but do, can, you, can you front load that right now? Are there any plans to do that? In other words, if you have customers that you already want to put on the platinum plan or the gold plan and you want to charge them different pricing? Yes, we can. Yes. That, that can be done today. Yeah, so the question is that we have um, threshold, but can we do plan for customers saying that, okay, this customer has Sign, for, sign up for this plan with this capacity and things like that, and can we chat for that, right? Uh, so yes, we can, and actually some of the customers already ask us for that. So it is, it is the case, yeah. Any other question? Hi, uh, yesterday in the rating session, it became very clear that there's many people doing their own thing for their own use cases. And in the end, there was a question, is there some place where we can all pull all this together? Should that place be Cloud Kitty? Do you so, intend to be the so rating the, system for yeah, OpenStack? We would love to. So actually. the question was, um, yesterday there was a, yeah, you write on the microphone, but I would just uh, repeat it. <laughs> uh, the, just to be sure I understand clearly. Uh, the question was, uh, there was a rating session during the ops uh, track yesterday, and we the conclusion, the conclusion we, we were there, and the conclusion was that many people were using their own system, developing their own system. And so, do we plan to be a common framework for all of them? Uh, at this, uh, we really hope so. Uh, that's what we hope to do. Actually, this is something that we, we have started to do a long, some time ago already, because um, when we started to announce Cloud Kitty, it was in last September or something like that, um, we announced it quite widely. A few companies said, oh, but we're also doing something like that. 
And we said, okay, so that's great because we, we love to see that people are interested in rating. And so we, decide, we decide, decided to have a lot of meetings together to define the perfect architecture that we want for a rating system for OpenStack. And so we defined the, archi the architecture and at the end, we compare that with the existing tool. And it turns out that the architecture that was the closest to what we get was CloudKitty. So we said, okay, we should put our info all together on CloudKitty. And so we have addressed a few points that were bothering the people, the, other company, the people from the other company, so that it can be really open, really wide, that can address all the needs that we have for this architecture. And CloudKitty is, the, the CloudKitty you're seeing right now is this uh, result. Okay, thank you. I've got another question on scaling. Yeah. Um, there surely there must be some scaling limits. Can you scale up to, let's say, 5,000 hypervisors, 10,000 virtual machines? So the question was for scaling. And uh, if there, I would just say that, do we have plan for scaling to address a lot of uh, data? So uh, maybe Stefan can say that. Yeah, we want to have big users. Actually, our clients are not that big, so we will have uh, more of hundreds of VMs. So uh, we don't have real um, feedbacks from big users. So we are really happy uh, to have uh, feedbacks from great <coughs> users, big users. So you can see where are the uh, pain points and what we can improve to scale. Uh, actually, we're using uh, Silometer APIs. Some people don't like that. Uh, we want to add a new collector, a uh, new key collector, so you, we can have uh, better scaling opportunities. And basically, uh, if you're using StackTac or every other stuff, you can just create your new module. It's really simple to uh, get a, a metric. It's just a module, and your module exposes a, a function, and the function is responsible of uh, pushing back data to CloudKitty. So it's really simple. But we don't have uh, real experiences on big uh, cloud usage. But actually, uh, just to complete, uh, we clearly have developed CloudKitty to be able to scale. So all the components that uh, we sh explained you earlier, they can be separated, they can be, expo they can be exploded because they are communicating with uh, messaging like all the other components in OpenStack. So we have designed Open uh, CloudKitty with the same mind than the rest of the OpenStack components so to be, a scale to be, to be scalable. So we, we don't have the test case yet, but um, we think it should be okay. I have a question about the, um, the link between, I would say, a tenant and some kind of rating system. So basically, the future of OpenStack and the Identity API is V3. Um, I would like to know if there are plans to work with V3, because it changes a lot in terms of uh, the way it works. Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, so we are working with V2 at the moment of Keystone. Uh, we don't have plan for V3. Uh, if people need V3, we will work on V3. But uh, for the moment, all our clients are using V2. Uh, they don't use a federated uh, stuff in OpenStack, so we don't support V3 at the moment. If there is a huge demand for V3, we will look at it. But at the moment, we want to add new features uh, create a more robust uh, rating component. Like I said, uh, there is some uh, stuff that we can improve, like validity periods. And we don't want to focus on V3 if we can have uh, a real robust uh, rating system before. Actually, I think it's quite related to the previous question, because the people will, will be interested on all the new V3 identity stuff will be the one with a huge uh, with the we use clouds. So if we are not able to bring them the scalability we, we think we have, and we've, if we won't start working on V3. Since you have noticed at the beginning, we're just a small company. Uh, we are welcoming a lot of patches for sure, but so far the patches are not that often. So we welcome patches uh, whenever, they get, whenever they arrive for sure. But this is something that we might do, clearly. And we are really open to have a lot of feedback and a lot of uh, 
questions about that, but uh, this is not on the, our, uh, it's not on our roadmap yet because we haven't faced the need yet. That's it. Any other questions? Yeah. Hi. So um, I do work for a large enterprise and we're trying to put in OpenStack and one of the things that comes up is we're looking at the reading side. As of right now, everything, so I have a couple questions. Um, just mainly, I guess, feedback or maybe feed for th uh, food for thought. Uh, one question is the financial auditing aspect of things. Anything financial related, there's an entire audit trail and things that need to be maintained. I'm just curious, is that something that your clients needed or you guys have started looking into or thought about? So the question was, um, usually when people are using to, uh, are starting to touch <coughs> to the billing system or to the money, actually, uh, there needs to be an audit of the financial stuff. Um, I, a customer, did quite a lot of uh, tests on their own system to see if it was working. Uh, they didn't have, I would say, a, a proper financial audit like this, but they did a lot of uh, tests and tests and te a lot of testing, and so far it was working well. <laughs> so. That's it. But we, if you have any idea, you can do that properly. Sure. Um, mainly by auditing, what I mean is that uh, financially post, so two years down the road, they should be able to see the history and make a report saying that these certain things had this much charge at that certain time. So okay. those, that's the auditing part. Uh, second question I had was, uh, people did talk about having, having customers on platinum, gold, things like that. That's very interesting. Um, within an enterprise, we have, I call it funny money, where one part has to pay a certain amount of money. Um, but since nobody in, at least in the enterprise, we don't have the credit card system where you put down the credit card and you'll get charged as you keep getting using it. So it's usually an upfront cost. So I'm curious if any of your clients have thought about or have you guys thought about maybe looking at um, you put in a VM or a project and you say that this is the upfront cost that they have now provided. And then as the time goes on, at what point they dip below how much they had initially paid so I can go back and ask them for more money? Um, is that something that has ever come up? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Um, actually, we are welcoming uh, all the ideas. Uh, we, we have created uh, Cloud Kitty to have an open source rating component. So everyone who wants to add new ideas and uh, uh, shape the future of Cloud City. We are really welcoming them um, because everyone is creating his own rating system and billing system, and we want to share all the, um, the knowledge of every people on the rating part to be able to have a solid and robust rating part <coughs> in OpenStack. So, Thank you. Uh, I think uh, we are out of time. We are out of time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we you can just talk to us right now. Thanks Thank a lot. You. <coughs>